Gonsal, wow, what a week for our poor president. He's been bombing harder than Mike Huckabee at an open mic night. And his Republican friends can't get out the door fast enough. Fuck the two drink minimum. The latest count by CBS News shows at least 24 House Republicans oppose the American Health Care Act. President Trump warning fellow Republicans vote yes for the GOP health care bill or else. The Washington Post quoting President Trump saying, I'm going to come after you. Watch out, guys. He's got the might of the Russian army behind him. <laughs> Doubling down on his wiretapping foolishness has brought Trump nothing but derision. Even on the editorial page that's so conservative, it gets offended when it gets recycled. This is from the editorial. Yet the president clings to his assertion like a drunk to an empty <laughs> gin bottle. an empty gin bottle. He must have wandered into Steve Bannon's office. <laughs> then there's the president's budget, which Republicans are giving less support than this jogging bra designed by men. It's dead on arrival. It's not going to happen. It would be a disaster. Oh, now be fair. Distilling Trump's spittle-flecked campaign jeremiads and incoherent revenge fantasies into policy isn't an exact science. And if it were an exact science, this budget would defund it. EPA, uh, down 31%. That's what this budget calls for. State, 28%. HHS, Health and Human Services, down 16%. And HUD, a $6 billion cut there. We're moving it to defense. $52 billion there. To the veterans, $4.4 billion. Homeland Security, $2.8 billion. This kind of sounds like when an insecure guy tries to make his penis look bigger by shaving down everything else around it. And if you don't buy my dick metaphor, here's how Trump's budget director, Mick Mulvaney, describes the plan. This is a hard power budget. 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 Hard, power, and budget were the names of Paul Ryan's three children. <laughs> you know, Trump didn't write this thing because, well, you know, so he just shoved some good luck cilantro in his budget director's pocket and sent him out to defend it. This budget simply reallocates and re reprioritizes spending as any family or business would do. That leprechaun is right. Families routinely tweak their budgets by canceling their kids' education, throwing out all their books and medicine, selling their smoke detectors, and redirecting all their money to guns, ammo, and a moat stocked with alligators. Oh, and making the nanny so miserable that she quits. What you would see if this budget were enacted would be an awful lot of empty metal desks in Washington, D.C. Empty metal desks that can be beaten into swords! Am I right? Hard power! Oh! Oh! Oh my God. It's contagious. President Trump's budget reveals something very important about him. No lamestream media, not just his priorities. Jesus, get an original idea. It reveals that he has no fucking clue what he's doing. Surprise! Let's look at one wasteful government program getting the ax. Energy Star, kiss it goodbye, snowflakes. Energy Star costs taxpayers about $57 million a year, but saves consumers and businesses $34 billion a year, which looks like a great return on investment, unless you're someone who was somehow stupid enough to lose money in the casino business. <laughs> Gosh, if only there was some way to tilt the advantage to the casino owner. <laughs> Unlike intimate contact with the president, Energy Star is voluntary. Companies can still make coal-powered hair dryers if they want to. I mean, this is America. It just provides options for people who want to cut their utility bills without going back to the way our ancestors did things, vacuuming with a baby elephant and doing laundry in a pelican's mouth. At least, that's what I read in Betsy DeVos's textbooks. But our president doesn't give a shit about any of that, so let's talk about something he is unhealthily obsessed with. American carnage. Bingo! I'm gonna take you back to something awful that happened in 1995. And it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Oh, God, no! No, something somehow even worse that happened in Chicago when people had inefficient air conditioners and turned them all on at once. 
A heat wave in 1995 killed more than 700 people. Police trucks lined up to drop off bodies at the Cook County morgue. About 250,000 households lost power. Elevators don't work. The water pumps can't get water up to higher floors. Obviously, the air conditioning doesn't work either. Okay, this is the worst BuzzFeed listicle ever. The difference between the demand the utility could handle and the demand that caused the blackouts was just 3.2%, which means a slight improvement in AC energy efficiency could have prevented the blackouts and many of the deaths. But we probably won't see more heat waves, right, Lucky Charms? Regarding the question as to climate change, I think the president was fairly straightforward. We're not spending money on that anymore. We consider that to be a waste of your money. Fine. You know what? Fuck it. Trump's America is already a figurative hell. It may as well be hotter than hell, too. We'll be right back.